what he said. Uh, it's important, this is a business. Um, you know, my story, I'm a singer-songwriter. I got my big break after guitar player Hanson back in 1997. We were the top seller in the world Hansen. that year. And it was a pretty awesome experience because not only did I learn, not only is it the Harvard Business School of Rock and Roll to be in that position, but it is the opportunity to network and meet everybody that I possibly could and launch my independent career out of it. That was the plan. Met everybody, you know, the, the Steve Greenbergs and Dan Goldbergs and everybody, Donnie Honors, were, these were all the people I was hanging out with. And what happened? The whole industry collapsed a couple of years later and all of them were sending me their resume. And it was like, I, I, literally, I'm getting a resume from X A and R and S saying, you know, can you find me a job? And I thought these guys were going to make my career. So I realized that this was going to be a problem. Uh, so I started thinking, well, how can I leverage something off of this platform? Uh, I don't have a record company that's going to give me a deal right now. I'm not going to get tour support. But what I didn't notice is that there were three books on the New York Times bestseller list written about Hanson. I said, I'm going to write a book. I wrote a book about my journal, my story of Hanson. Simon & Schuster published it. They put me on the road for a year. That was my tour support. I released an independent album on the same day that the book was released. And I played every Borders Books and Music in America, selling two products all funded by a book company, and playing in all of these. Well, that started to get kind of interesting, and people started asking me to come speak about it. So all of a sudden, I'm speaking about this stuff every time. Ever since, I've been speaking at Berkeley College of Music, speaking at NAMM. This is my 12th year speaking at NAMM. I also speak at the NAMM Russia show, the NAMM China show. Uh, so that's when I really started becoming a speaker, and I realized that I was on a platform where I could talk about and add a lot of value, not only to you, but to everybody, every exhibitor that's exhibiting a product. So my revenue model became sponsorship and endorsement deals for, to this day, with some of the great companies that we have here uh, that support me going to music schools and talking about it, that support me in the, in the efforts that I make. So it's always trying to think about, you know, outside of the box and strategic partnerships as part of my business to ultimately still propel my music forward. So interesting you introduced me as a marketing guy. Nobody's ever done that before. I don't think of myself that way. I like think of myself as an artist. Thanks, Jay. But <laughs> the reality is, is that I always am thinking about marketing because I want to I want to tell my strategic partners. How am I going to get their message through what I do? Because that's what develops strength in my business. My team. My team is sound. My team is smart. My team is young. And they're the ones that allow me to keep coming out and doing cool things. Nam is part of my team. Nam takes me to all these great shows. Quick, real quick story that's going to tie in with uh, Thompson. But uh, speaking in Nam, Russia, middle of Moscow, I make some comment. I'm the only American in the world here in Russia. It's kind of weird. At the end of it, another guy comes up to me and says, you're not the only American. I'm the other American. Well, who are you? I'm the cultural attache from the U.S. Embassy. So, <laughs> interesting. So do you guys ever do, what, what does that mean? They said, well, we take artists and we put on shows uh, you know, all around the world. So you ever do anything about artist entrepreneurship? America, entrepreneurs, right? That's what we're the best. So I started an entrepreneur, artist entrepreneur. Entrepreneurship program for the U.S. State Department, which takes me all over the freaking world to Russia, to China. This year I'm going to France, Prague. I'm doing the first time ever U.S. State Department sponsoring songwriter workshops in Jakarta, in Indonesia. And the reason why this ties into what you're saying about the craziness in the world is because the new lecture that I'm giving is Entrepreneurship, a Pillar of Democracy, a Weapon Against Radicalism. And how are we going to deal with this yeah. issue? And going to the, the uh, largest Muslim population in the world. In uh, uh, Indonesia, and teaching songwriting. The message here is, we can do this. We are the ones with the power to do this. So, not to knock it, I'm not going to buy a gun, but I'm going to take a guitar, <laughs> and I'm going to and I'm going to change the world that way. And every one of us is fairly uniquely equipped as musicians to do this. Thing. And you know what? ISIS is all marketing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All comes back to that, doesn't it? So we got to get our marketing chops together and make the world a great place for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Cheyenne, talk about some of the areas again 